You're listening to the Level Flight Podcast on the Hockey Podcast Network. Welcome in, everyone. Uh, we're here on a Sunday morning to talk about a deal that was made uh, yesterday afternoon where the Jets acquired forward Nino Niederreiter from the Nashville Predators. Connor, your initial thoughts? Give me fuel, give me fire. Give me Nino Niederreiter. Let's go, baby. That I love better this be trade. a school song. Oh, it better be. Like, how could it not? The Jets social media team literally tweeted it out. Everyone was tweeting it out. He has to choose that as a school song. Or else it's, a, it's a letdown. Um, but yeah, my initial thoughts, this happened while I was at the Moose game. So it was kind of, I sent it to a frenzy. But um, yeah, it's a great deal. Like, it's a 2024 second round pick. Um, we'll get into what Niederreiter brings to the table, but that seems like pretty good value for a guy with term um, and his analytics are outstanding. So if you're part of the analytics community, you will love, you know, need a rider. Yeah. And it's, it's also like, it's a situation where he's one of those guys that the underlying numbers love, but he's also someone that teams just like to have because he generates a ton. He drives a lot of play. He's not a small guy either, and he's not afraid to get into the dirty areas to score. So uh, he kind of captures the hearts of everyone, um, which is perfect because there was a lot of polarizing guys out there. And this was a move that I don't think anyone really expected, especially this early, like a full week before the deadline. But um, I think it's a good move in terms of what they need. Uh, they like, I mean, he's a, proven goal scorer like yeah he has his ups and downs throughout the season but he's he's on route to i think his seventh uh 20 goal season so yeah. it's not like he has trouble scoring and uh obviously that's going to be among the leaders on the jets because it's been a bit of a struggle for them this year so um no getting a you know, bona fide um 20 goal scorer who has you know this level of experience in the league and he knows what works for him obviously uh, that's going to be a big boost for this team and uh, a big boost for the middle six. Um, I think that the key, though, is putting him with the right guys to help both himself and others succeed. Uh, specifically, I think it's a really good idea if they stick him with one of the centers and Nikolai Ehlers because you need someone who can kind of, uh, you know, puck handle and get uh, in and around the zone and try and get the puck sort of in the interior there and uh, get it to Niederreiter. Yeah, I think Ehlers, Shifley, Niederreiter has to be the opening line because everything I've read online about Niederreiter or in articles um, when this trade happened was basically that he is great on the wall, he's great in the dirty areas, but you need someone on his line to do all the transition work and do the puck carrying and the puck handling. And that's Nikolai Ehlers, like that's what he's good at. Um, so you put Ehlers on the line, you put Shifley there for, for a scoring touch, um, and then you keep Connor and Dubois together on the second line. But the timing of this seems very intentional with Perfetti going out and the 5-1 loss to Colorado on Friday. Uh, it just seems like when Perfetti went out, everyone like kind of lost a little bit of hope because he's out for the rest of the regular season now. And then you come out and you get blown out in what your coach calls the biggest game of the year. Um, this is th that that was like probably sounding the alarms in Chevy's office. So he he went out and made a move. And I'm really excited. We're recording this Sunday morning. Um, we're going to try and get it out before the Jets game. They play at 2.30 against New York. But even though Niederreiter is not playing, I will, I'm excited to see how they respond to like the GM showing that, like, yeah, I support this core and I'm giving you guys help and I'm making a move to, to, to help you guys out because Perfetti went out and I went out and got another guy. So I want to see if they reward him in that sense. Um, but, yeah, I, I think to, to go back to your original point, I think he has to play with Nikolai Ehlers. Then again, I don't want Nino Niederreiter on the fourth line. So we'll see how that goes because <laughs> Ehlers has been on the fourth line. Uh, so I, I really hope that they throw him right in the top six and there's no blender in the first period of the first game. Like just stick him with Ehlers and Chifley and just let that go for like six games and see what happens because you yeah. need a sample size with new players, right? Yeah. Well, and I think the, the key to this too, and I know I think both, you, I, and a variety of others made this point. This trade is great. It's great value. Uh, it's mm -hmm. great for what the Jets need. It cannot be the only trade. Right. Uh, so 
we're going to get a lot more into this uh, later this week. We're, we're going to be recording on Wednesday this week. So on Thursday, day before the deadline, if if there's actually any players left, because as we were recording yeah. this, Ivan Barbashev was just traded to Vegas. Um, there was uh, another trade earlier on with uh, Evgeny Dadnov going to Dallas, which according to Pierre Lebrun, uh, the Jets were a potential landing spot for him. Um, oh. So that actually, that shocked me a I little. Wouldn't have but, I wouldn't have no, that. but I mean, I prefer I what we what we ended up doing. Yeah, true. Um, uh, but and then apparently, uh, the Timo Meyer news should be settled in the next twenty four hours. So, by the time we record the next pod, it's probably going to be a significantly different trade landscape. So, um, we're going to get more into that then. But we really wanted to make sure that we make it clear that the Niederreiter deal is really good for the Jets. But in order for them to keep pace and contend, they need to add at least another uh, impact forward, maybe maybe an impact forward and a middle six guy and some sort of defensive help. Uh, someone to push Pionk down into some more sheltered minutes, preferably. Um, I've got a little bit of a shameless plug here. I've got a piece that I'm working on <laughs> uh, for the hockey writers right now about how uh, a Schmaltz and Gostas Bear deal could be something to look at because... Uh, you know, you're getting similar impact from Goss to spare uh, to some of the other bigger names out there. So um, you you want to find some other guys to really, you know, make that difference. But I think Niederreiter's a great start given what he adds to a team. And given the price that they paid, like yeah. I was telling you before we hopped on here is like the Jets kept all of their major assets in this deal. Like. Lambert, Lucius, Hainala, both of their, all three of their first round picks for the next three years, they still have it. So if they want to go out and get a bigger name, they can. They can still do that. Um, Nick Jensen is a name that if we're if we're targeting defensemen, I, I would like to see him because the Capitals, like we, me and you, have been flip flopping back and forth. Like, are the Capitals se- selling? Are they not? Are they going in? Who we knows? can confirm that they. But then they after they made that deal, they got linked to Chikrin. Because they want to yeah. like, do a, a rebuild on the fly kind of thing. I don't know. So I, I, who knows what Washington's doing? But you should inquire about Nick Jensen. That's my take. Um, and then yeah, back to the Niederreiter news. He, like, he provides so much of what the Jets need, but the bottom six still needs so much help. So yeah. so much help. I, like again, it's full of penalty killers. It's full of defensively responsible players. But if you add another forward, and then Perfetti comes back first round of the playoffs middle of the first round of the playoffs that is a forward core that can actually compete um if you add another middle six forward another top six forward type thing um as for defense i want them to add nick jensen but i'm scared that if they add a defenseman sandberg will be the one out yeah and not like pionk or whoever else um because they've been rotating sandberg out anyways they've been rotating him and Stanley. So are, are those rookies going to be the ones that get taken out or is it going to be a veteran? I, I doubt that bonus would bench Pionk even with his struggles. Yeah. Um, so just out of a pure, like viewing how the jets would handle it standpoint, I think acquiring two forwards would be a better move than acquiring one forward and one defenseman just because the forward core needs, needs so much help in the bottom six. Um, yeah, but yeah, I want to bring up Nina Ryder's analytics for a second here, if I can, because if I mentioned it earlier, if you're a part of the analytics community, but this guy, yeah, if you're watching on video this way, this guy is solid. Um, he likes to shoot the puck a lot and clearly he likes to get to high danger areas with that 94% even strength offense. Um, like Brian said in the start scores a lot of goals. I think he's on pace for 26 or 27 this year. Um, positive penalty differential finishes off chances Jets fans are going to love him because apparently he just doesn't like to pass the puck and there's been a whole th- <laughs> there's been a whole thing over the last like two weeks when the Jets have been sliding that people are like oh they're overpassing especially on the power play um but yeah don't worry Nita Ryder likes to shoot the puck he doesn't like to pass so that would be good he's not a net negative defensively um he can hold his own he's really strong along the wall um, and then again, if you get someone that can do the transition work like Nikolai Ehlers, you're going to be getting the best version of Nino Niederreiter and the Jets are perfectly set up to get that. So I just wanted to share this just to provide some more context on what Niederreiter is as a player. Um, yeah. cause again, yeah, he plays for a division rival, but not a lot of people might know. Um, 
But yeah, play driving strong along the wall, strong in front of the net, analytical darling. I, I'm so excited to see him play. I think his first game is going to be Tuesday against the Kings. I think Sarah Orleski yeah. tweeted that out. Um, and I'm excited for that game because the Kings are a good team. And Niederreiter's first game, the deployment where they put him, I'm, I'm stoked. Yeah, and who knows, even by that point, uh, depending on how things shake out, there might even be another move. Yeah, Yeah, Um, exactly. Which I think ultimately, uh, as I said, we'll get more in depth and we'll actually bring up more names and options that are still out there. But Mm -hmm. I think ultimately, in order for them to really take the next step, they need someone else, I'd say another top six or middle six winger to bump Wheeler down into uh, a third line role. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just... Because I honestly think that if you have a, you know, you've got Niederreiter, Shifley, Ehlers, and then Connor Dubois guy who you acquire, uh, then you have, I mean, even if you don't make another move to solidify the, uh, you know, the, that that bottom six there, um, because of, that's obviously not going to cost a lot to do, um, right. you would then have a Baron Lowry wheeler line which i think would be a better fit for wheeler at this point since he's come Mm -hmm. back from his injury he seems to really be grinding away out there and it's just it's not working offensively as much and i think Mm -hmm. that if you put him in a a role where you're going to have a little bit less offensive burden on him because that's just not the makeup of that line but he can provide a little bit more uh you know he's still he's not uh, he's not slow by any means any uh, still so like he uh, he's got that Baron. I still think, I mean, obviously you're, you're running out of time to see it from him, but I still think there's a little bit more offensively that he might have. Um, it's just that his finishing's just not there, but he's, he's still getting the chances. So yeah, to me, I, Baron is a guy, sorry to cut you off. Baron is a guy that's like, he'll generate th- these type of chances his whole career. And then for like one season in a contract year, he's going to go on a shooting tear. Yeah. And get like three million dollars, three and a half million, four million from one team, like for five years, and then revert back to this, what we're seeing now, where he's generating lots, but he just can't finish it. But if one time in his career he goes on a shooting tear, he's gonna make money, he's gonna make life changing money off of it because he's generating a decent amount. He's just not finishing it, the chances. Yeah. But yeah. But then then you have options in that fourth line. Uh right. that, for, that, so you don't have to worry about uh, rolling guys that probably shouldn't be in the lineup. And uh, you're looking at, I mean, obviously you're going to have, I, I would say Stenland at this point is probably going to just mm-hmm. stick around in the lineup, uh, at least good. for the time being. Um, and then you'll move, a- obviously Appleton would, uh, uh, you know, hang on. I think in a fourth line role, I think that's where he's going to be most useful. I, I think the fact that they're trying to plug him into a top six and it's really just not, it's not working. Uh, I, I think it's just a matter of they need to put him in a space where uh, his game of, you know, just run and gun, not, you know, offensively, you know, too talented in that sense. Mm-hmm. I, I think that'll be better for him and the team. Plus, it, it also it makes it gives you more options as to who can actually be in the lineup rather than, you know, having yourself, you know, putting guys like you know, Sacramento line in every night um, having to jump around between Coolman and AGF and Gagne. Uh, so that's, I think, I think it, it would help. It's once again, the trickle down effect mm-hmm. is massive when you get the, the names further up in the lineup, then you get to have just that level of depth that really helps out. So uh, I think if they end up bumping a few guys down, it's going to be the best possible bet rather than trying to add a guy to go into that bottom six because then you just add another weird dynamic of who am i taking out who am i putting in if you add someone up top you're not going to be cycling them in and out after you spend an asset for them yeah and it's flexibility right like if you go out and get another guy um and then maybe you don't want to load up the top six you want to do the thing that coaches do sometimes you put two play drivers on a line and then one kind of like like pedestrian player um quote unquote um because they're all professional hockey players but you know what i mean it's like connor shifley appleton um as opposed to connor shifley ehlers uh but maybe you go that all the way down the lineup and then you go niederreiter dubois and then gagne like and then if you add another guy um you don't even have the option to go duo and uh pedestrian because you have so many options that no yeah. one's a uh, pedestrian on any line right um but yeah it's the jets this is exactly what they needed they needed a player that goes to high danger areas of the ace and shoots the puck and that is exactly what need rider is 
he has another year left on his deal. So the Jets are clearly trying to contend for not just this year, but next year as well. Um, I still wouldn't mind if they got a rental. Like uh, if you are going all in for this year, trading your first round pick that ends up being pick 25 or later or whatever um, in a wide open Western conference is honestly fine. So I, I, there's still a lot to be desired because we're still four or five days away. We're yeah. going to talk about that more, like you said, on on Wednesday's pod. Um, that'll come out Thursday. And then we're going to do some trade deadline coverage on the actual day of Friday. You might see a bunch of clips from us. You might see a live stream. Um, we'll see. But yeah, we just wanted to hop on and break down the Niederreiter trade because I don't know about you, but I'm super excited. This is exactly what the Jets needed, and I can't wait to see him play. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as Connor said, we're going to be... Uh doing some more actual deadline day coverage uh, if there's actual players left. Um, yeah. But we're going to be putting more information uh, tomorrow about that, so you'll be able to get more of the details on that. But, yeah, a bit of a soft launch on that today. So uh, we're really excited to uh, to bring that to you guys. So we've been talking about this for quite a while and figuring out how logistically it's going to work, and we think we finally hammered it down. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to that. But, you know, Nita Ryder is a Winnipeg Jet. That's – uh. Give me fuel, give me fire. <laughs> Listen, number I want to see number 21 coming out onto the ice, scoring a goal, fueled yeah. by Metallica playing. Then yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll die a happy it's man. It's electric. Electric. Yeah. But, uh, really... yeah, thanks for everyone for listening. And uh, as we said, we'll be back a few times this week. So, uh, you know, enjoy the Jets game this afternoon against the Islanders. Uh, and enjoy the potential Nino Niederreiter debut game on Tuesday. And we will see you on Thursday morning with a brand new pod. Unless there's a different deal, but we'll, unless, we'll cross the bridge when unless. we get there. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. uh, from uh, myself and Connor, uh, have a great Sunday and we'll see you later in the week. You've been listening to the Level Flight Podcast on the Hockey Podcast Network.